Everyone loves freedom. It is one of the most important, if not the only important value of all. No one complains about having too much freedom. Many even think that some individuals are too free to the extent that additional laws should be put in place. Specifically, successful people should be taxed, regulated, and penalized more. However, there are many others who think differently. They feel entitled to all the freedom they want. Self-made millionaires spend a lot of time pondering the answers to the questions. How much money do I need to form the lifestyle I want? And once I have it, what will I do next? They focus on it. They have to sacrifice a lot in the short term to accumulate enough net worth that generates income for their freedom. Their families get freedom, and the freedom they get, they tirelessly work until they reach the deadline. Then they can engage in many activities such as charity and eliminate tasks they dislike. Naturally, in the early stages of life, you will have to work hard, put your whole heart into financial freedom goals, and accomplish them when you have the most energy, desire, and opportunities. Looking dreamy about money has many explanations as to why some people remain poor throughout their lives. The law of belief states that everything you truly believe will become your reality. Many believe in completely implausible things about money. In a world governed by laws, we live in a world governed by laws, not by chance. Things happen not by luck, nor by accident. The law of cause and effect states that everything happens for a reason. There is always a cause for everything. The immutable law determines the fate of human beings. All successful outcomes, whether rich or poor, have one or more specific causes. Every cause or action has consequences in one form or another, regardless of whether we notice or like it. The most important principle contributing to personal or business success is what you spend the most time thinking about. The external world is a reflection of your inner world. Therefore, it's not what happens to you but how you think about it that determines your emotions and reactions. The external world doesn't control your circumstances. Rather, your inner world shapes your life, including your thoughts about money and finances, which strongly affect your financial situation. Today, individuals from affluent families are more likely to succeed financially because it's the environment they grew up in where they saw, heard, and were taught that if they work hard and create value, they can also succeed financially. Even if you envy and resent others or engage in negative conversations or gossip behind their backs, it doesn't affect them. They might not even know you're doing it, and frankly, they don't care. Yet it destroys all your hopes and dreams of achieving success. Therefore, never engage in gossip or envy successful people. People often say, oh, they're rich but they're not happy. I've studied the way very carefully, though I can affirm that they are very happy. It's said that your income will be the average income of the five people you spend most of your time with. Although this is true, it's an interesting way of thinking. Your net worth will be the average net worth of the people you associate with. Why is that? It's because you develop the same mindset and lifestyle as them. Whatever you truly believe in will become your reality. The biggest challenge we face is self-limiting beliefs. I believe that we are limited in one way or another. For me personally, what hindered my development for many years was the belief that without a good education, without graduating from high school and going to college, I would never succeed. But then I was kicked out of high school. Limiting beliefs involve thinking that you can attract money and wealth using the power of your mind and dominant ideas behind the law of attraction. Before it affects your health, it reflects your thoughts on food, nutrition, diet, exercise, and hesitation. The second area is your relationships. You always attract people who resonate with your dominant thoughts. Therefore, if you have a truly positive mindset, you seem to always be surrounded by other truly positive people. Lastly, it's your financial situation. You will always know what someone thinks about money by observing what they attract into their lives. That's just the beginning, but there's much more to it. Some books say that all you have to do is think about happiness, visualize wealth and success, and you'll attract it. That's not true. The Bible says that faith without action is useless. That means you have to work very hard to establish a field of energy, influence, and establishing an energy field that permanently affects your financial assets is impossible if you don't consistently implement consistent and harmonious actions. Some people often think negatively about money, such as that the rich are evil. Such thoughts typically stem from the poor being angry. If you believe in that, you'll never succeed financially because you'll self-sabotage. That's why many people suffer from self-sabotage after earning a lot of money. Wanting to achieve something without effort or price, wanting to possess something they didn't earn and don't deserve, 
It's one of the most destructive notions to human hopes and dreams globally. Misconception number two. The way rich people spend time thinking about how to make money. The idea that the rich are always thinking about making money is inaccurate. The most important principle in human life is the principle of service. Earl Nightingale once said, Your rewards in life will always match your service to others. The question you need to ask yourself every day is, What can I do today to increase the value of my service to others? Henry Ford revolutionized the world of manufacturing when people worked in teams. It took about 300 hours to make a car. As one team did everything with the help of their engineers, Ford developed an assembly line that could produce the final car in that time, but at a cost of $300 instead of $3,000. The real creators of the cars, the manual laborers, the lowest class in society, at this point, all have the ability to buy the products they create. Henry Ford transformed the entire world, and that was his greatest joy. He almost became the richest person in the world by bringing cars closer to everyone, something that had never been done before. When the wealthy consider the development of a hotel, real estate, or stock store, they always consider how they can develop that product or service to help people improve their quality of life. That's what they're always thinking about. It's what inspires them, and they receive rewards that are well-deserved. Misconception number three. You cannot achieve personal financial goals, let alone wealth if you're just a wage earner. The reason people don't retire financially independent is that they spend everything they earn. Then they start to panic because they don't have much savings. At age 50, they start to improve the situation by throwing any money they have or can borrow into get-rich-quick schemes. One thing is certain. Making money from get-rich-quick schemes is a loser's game. So many people become desperate. Remember, someone who starts early enough, saves long enough, and doesn't touch that money will experience the magic of compound interest over time. Staying in the market. You don't need to own a company. You don't need to be an entrepreneur. You just need to invest in other stocks and become a small owner, holding a small part of many different companies, being well managed and managed by experts. The next misconception is the most widely believed. Misconception number four, stating that most wealthy people live in red neighborhoods, drive luxury cars, and spend lavishly. A person's life has three periods five months of learning five months of earning, and five months of desire. Nowadays, of course, we often say that the years of learning will last forever, from the years of earning. It's when you work hard and accumulate money, then develop that money will come to a point where you reach a threshold, where the money you invest will generate greater returns than your income. That's when you start to slow down, and you can gradually reduce the frequency and volume of work over five to ten years. Then all you need to do is manage your spending carefully, and live comfortably for the rest of your life. The time to start buying a house, the time to start spending, is after you've overcome the difficult period to achieve financial independence and can start investing your surplus. Timing is crucial. You need enough savings so that if you want to buy a house, even if the whole world is in a very bad situation, you can still afford to make payments that meet your living standards and wishes for your family. But if you spend too soon, you curse yourself when disasters happen and risk ending up with nothing. Misconception number five, stating that you can get rich through playing the lottery or hitting the jackpot. Wanting riches without being willing to work for them is like cancer. It subtly tempts people in a very cunning way. One of its guises is exchanging a dollar for a lottery ticket. Striving or trying to achieve something without putting effort into it will destroy the soul of a person. It's a disease accumulating slowly. It starts to erode the spirit and body. Smart spending. If you ask someone what they would do if they won the lottery, the first thing they mention is what they plan to buy. You need to change your mindset about spending. Instead of thinking if I had money, I would make myself happy by spending it, you should think if I had money, I would make myself happy by saving it. Time and money can be spent or invested. If you spend it, it will disappear forever. If you invest it, you will receive a profit from it. This is what most people fail to understand. The more you invest time in improving yourself and your earning potential, the more money you will make and accumulate. It will generate even more. In matters of money, there's a law of conservation. This proposition states that the issue isn't what you can make, but what you can keep. This will determine your financial future. Spending sensibly will yield investment returns. You preserve it, you save it. Irrational spending occurs when money disappears forever, and you never get it back. Debt management has a rule. 
Everything costs twice and three times what you think. So if you think you'll break even within six months, it might take up to 12 months. Everything will be more expensive because many things you can't imagine, even with an extremely good budget. Reserving from 50 to 100%, you can still be shocked. That's why I say this assumption is meaningless. Don't spend your money when starting a business because at the beginning, you can spend every penny you can borrow along with everything you own or accumulate. According to Forbes magazine, 80% of new businesses go bankrupt within two years. Learn the lesson. All new businesses have to race against time. You can make a profit before you run out of money. In business, there's a rule. It takes two years to break even, two more years to repay the money you borrowed in the first two years. No business, according to Peter Parker, makes a profit in the first four years. If you plan, you're probably crazy. There's also the 22325 rule. Two years to break even, two more years to pay off debts, and three more years to rise up and then make a profit. So it's good if you have enough cash to cover the first two years. If not, you'll go bankrupt. When hearing that, I used to say, that's absurd. That won't happen to me. I'm different. I'm better. But it actually took me seven years. All the people I listened to talked about the seven-year rule. Cost twice and takes three times longer than you think. It took two years to break even, two years to repay debts, and good old seven years to make a profit. When someone becomes a successful entrepreneur, they've certainly been through all those stages. When you're drowning in debt, the only way you can escape is to pay off the highest interest debt first. Look at your credit cards. Most are charging you at 18%, 23%, and even 30%. Pay off the credit card debt with the highest interest rates first. Prioritize all of your savings to them. People often advise to pay a little on everything. I just want to say, pay the minimum on them. If you want to maintain the status quo, that's fine. They won't haunt you as long as you keep making the minimum payments. Once you set yourself free from debt, there will be a range of strategies you can use. Use it to achieve that goal. One is to start saving money. The clear rule is to pay yourself first by saving at least 10% of your monthly income. However, if you're drowning in debt, start with a smaller savings amount. Following the steps below. Suppose you are drowning in debt and want to save as much money as possible to get out of this situation. You also can't save 10% each month. Save 1% and live on the remaining 99% because humans are creatures of habit, so if possible, treat it like setting aside 1% of your income at the beginning of the month. You will still live quite comfortably with the remaining 99%. In the second month, save 2%. In the third month, save 3%. Keep doing this. After a year, you can achieve a savings rate of up to 12%, while completely eliminating living expenses to the point where you won't even notice it. Write down everything you spend money on. You'll likely find yourself pouring money into a latte. Keeping track of expenses will help you not spend money on it anymore, so you save that amount of money. When you start saving money and increasing your financial freedom account, something good will happen to your debts. Your mindset will change, your attitude towards debts will also change, and it affects the accumulation of debt. To summarize our discussion on debt, because I've been deeply in it, I understand the psychological and emotional impact that comes with it. Sleepless nights, fear of foreclosure, parking far away from neighborhoods to avoid debt collectors, a truly terrifying life, and I've fallen into that situation many times. If this happens, and if it happens to you, resolve to break free from debt and stay away from it. Your motto, I will live a debt-free life. Go sit down, plan, and prioritize getting out of debt because this isn't something you do every day. This is something you need to do right now. If you're married, sit down with your spouse and list all your assets along with all basic expenses. Electricity, water, gasoline, groceries, etc. From different sources, make a detailed list for each debt. I've said before, you become what you think about most. Self-made millionaires are just like us, but they always stick to the rule. I will become wealthy, and then they did. You will never become wealthy until you decide like that. If you decide like that and take action, you will surely achieve financial independence because there are many opportunities and challenges for you to achieve that. Studies have calculated the amount of time that people burdened with financial problems spend thinking about money each month. They think about money around the clock. They think about money, talk about money, complain about money, cry about money, fight over money. They drive while still absent-mindedly thinking about financial issues. But how much time do they spend sitting down, figuring out, 
planning, and seriously dreaming about financial destiny? The answer is probably about one hour per month. People usually those fortunate spend about one hour per month jotting down notes, mostly when paying bills. I've been through that too. When you sit down and say, okay, we'll pay off the credit card this month, we'll pay this month's bill, you allocate money until it's almost gone, and then you start worrying about money next month. But what about self-made millionaires? They spend a minimum of 10 hours per month reading financial magazines, financial publications, they research financial news, they consider services including debt and investments, they spend 10 hours a month thinking about how to better organize their financial lives so they have a 1000% advantage, 10 times that of ordinary people, not spending time thinking, initiating income sources. Once you apply smart spending methods and effective debt management methods, you are financially literate. You need to make sure you're generating cash flow or steady income to invest in additional projects, as well as potential financial opportunities and live your style. Everyone wants to earn high and stable income, able to afford their dreams. People dream money suddenly gets transferred into their mailbox as if they still have money without working. It's a pipe dream indeed. I know some of the smartest people in the world have been holding on to this dream for 25 years. They always say that this is the ideal, the miracle, the way for me to start generating high income without working. In reality, the only way for you to generate high income is to invest time and money in producing goods to trade them, yourself or for others to trade. They receive royalties, commissions, dividends or whatever else. If you're going to invest any money, invest in what you excel at. I emphasize this repeatedly in my specialized workshops. I'm not asking you to win Olympic gold medals or become number one. Just be in the top 10% of your field because that's where all the money flows. One reason people don't make it into the top 10% in their field is that they completely choose the wrong industry and lack the drive in that field. The main reasons are they never commit to trying to break into the top 10% and they plateau. They reach a certain level of competence and then they let themselves plateau. Gary Becker, the Nobel Prize winning economist, conducted another interesting study. He found that the average income of those in the bottom 80% increases by about 2 to 3% per year, as long as they remain employed. This is an increase due to the cost of living, so they're not actually growing in the market. The top 20%, their income increases on average by 11.8% per year, because they continue to learn, develop, enhance their skills, and excel more and more in their field. So why do some people have such high incomes? It's because they do their job really, really well. So if you want to be paid more, the principle is quite simple. Start working a little earlier, work a little harder, stay a little later. I often tell people that the secret to success is working full-time, wholeheartedly, with the work you're doing. When people say, I want to start a business, I respond, make sure you provide a product or service that you would also want for yourself, for your family, for your mother, father, and your best friends, because you believe it's good enough to truly make a difference in their lives. That's the starting point. This doesn't mean you'll succeed, but if lacking it, according to many studies, you'll likely never put your full effort into entrepreneurship. You might end up golfing on Fridays, relaxing, chatting with friends, utilizing everything you can, borrowing and scraping by until the company goes bankrupt. These are the two main reasons companies go bankrupt in their early years. Because nobody wants to buy the product. And because they're not proactive. The most important thing you need to understand when making an investment is that you're playing a gamble with the knowledge and experience of that seller. You believe it will increase in value. The seller doesn't think so, or worse, they think it will decrease in value. That's why stock trading is always a game. The seller sees it as reaching its maximum value while the buyer hopes it will increase in value. The best investment is the one that provides you with the most stable cash flow, managed risk first and foremost. Income generating sources always carry a lot of risk because everyone wants high income. Everyone wants stable income. A good friend of mine said in an MBA class, three factors you'll have to deal with throughout your career and decide that everything will come to you is competition. Competition and competition. The best if you plan to invest is to invest with experts, those who have extensive experience and proven investment achievements, sharing the same investment risks as you. The best investment I've ever made is to collaborate with those who share my interests. Yeah. What if I don't make money? We make a profit together at a rate and pace. Those are the best investments, building prosperity. 
Some people fall into the top 1% richest in the world, or not even 1%, maybe zero corals or 1%, but this ratio is very rare. 99 out of 100 people because it requires many factors to come together. Most people don't get rich quick and wealthy by starting a single product business. I've researched this for many years. You start with one product and make that product successful. It's a series of stages you have to go through. The two key factors to success in business, according to Jim Collins, author of Good to Great, are first, you must have a product or service that is of significant value to the customer. The second factor is that it must be different and superior. It must be perceived as better than similar products already on the market. First, you must test the product to ensure there's a consumer market for it, then distribute with limited release, and figure out how much you can price it. Next, start introducing and distributing this product line to the public, and develop a business model that allows you to maximize the number of products or services you bring to the most customers at the best price and the shortest amount of time, then broaden that process, especially the repetition part. I find that the difference is not in the top 1% group, but in the top 3% group. The individuals in the top 3% richest in the world all have specific clear goals and written plans. They are like architects designing a beautiful building and constantly refining the blueprints. They work towards those goals and plans then make it into the top percentile on the planet. Becoming truly wealthy is very rare, but you can significantly increase your chances of success by careful planning and thoughtful consideration. Don't squander money, think carefully, invest time and effort to thoroughly research the business before pouring money into it, and commit to not giving up halfway. You must directly involve yourself in business activities to ensure its success. Anyone who says you can't do it is someone who has never been successful in business, because you'll understand that if you want to succeed, you have to put your whole heart into it. You may increase your chances of success, but you can never be sure. The biggest enemy of success in financial matters or any other field is complacency, the lure of the comfort zone. Many companies enter the market with a great product. The product receives praise, they sell it in large quantities, and then competitors jump in. Wherever there's a potential for higher than average profit, competitors will emerge with similar products or services to gain market share and increasing profits. Continuous and tireless innovation is why some companies and individuals are incredibly successful. Every passing day, somehow I'm becoming better and better. I learn more and more. I'll never go to bed at night if I don't see myself wiser than when I woke up that morning. Successful individuals always enhance their skills. At some point, everything needs to be done, and it's left to hope. If you're truly lucky, you'll be broken. That's how many people go from hardship to billionaire, enhancing prosperity. Once they reach a certain level, surely you'll want to find a way to invest conveniently to multiply it while being busy working to become more successful in the career you've chosen. But as we see, some people make mistakes when they're too reckless in investing, because they don't have enough necessary information. They're greedy or too busy to pay attention to where they invest and how they invest. One of your main goals in life should be financial independence. You must aim for the point where you have enough money to never worry about money again. Finding joy is now. Financial independence is easier to achieve than ever. Let's talk about some rules of money. The first is the law of receiving, which states that everything happens for a reason. There's always a cause for every outcome. This is an immutable law of human destiny. This law says that financial success is a result. Indeed, it stems from certain causes. When you identify these causes and implement them in your life as well as in your activities, you'll receive similar results that hundreds of thousands, even millions of others have received. You have the potential to receive any amount of money you truly desire if you do what others have done before you to achieve similar results. If not, you won't achieve that result. That's all. The next law is the law of investment. This law states that you should thoroughly research before you invest. This is one of the most important laws of money. You should spend time researching a specific investment at least as much time as you need to earn the amount of money you're putting into it. Don't rush away from the money you're holding. You've worked too hard to earn it, and it took too much time to accumulate it. The first consequence of the law of investment is that it's very easy to lose money. Earning money in a competitive market is very difficult, but losing it is one of the easiest things you can do. The second consequence of the law of investment comes from the self-made billionaires like Dip Devil, who was interviewed in Forbes magazine about his own money-making rule, saying that he has a simple principle, which is don't lose money. He calls this rule number one, 
he says if there's a risk of loss, don't get involved. Right from the start, this rule is so important that you should write it down and place it where you can see it. Read it over and over again. The third consequence of the law of investment states that if you think you can withstand a little loss, you'll ultimately lose a lot of money. So always ask yourself, what if? If you lose 100% of the investment, can you handle it? If you can't, the fourth consequence of the law of investment asserts that you should only invest with proven individual investment experts. Again, don't lose money. If you feel tempted, refer back to this rule and firmly hold on to what you have. Therefore, invest in what you fully understand and trust. Seek investment advice only from financially successful individuals and apply that advice when investing. The next law is the law of compound interest. This law states that careful investing and letting money grow through compound interest will make you wealthy. Compound interest is considered one of the greatest things in human and economic history. You can use the rule of 72 to determine the time it takes for your money to double at any interest rate. Yes, simply divide 72 by the interest rate. For example, if you receive an 8% return on your investment, when you divide 72 by 8, you'll get the number 9, meaning it will take 9 years for your money to double at an 8% interest rate. The first consequence of this law shows that the secret to compound interest is to let the money move somewhere and not touch it. Once you start accumulating money and begin to grow, don't touch it or review it for any reason. The next money law is the law of accumulation. You must be disciplined and persistent. You have to accumulate over a very long time. At first you'll see very few changes or differences occurring, but gradually your efforts will start to bear fruit. You'll begin to outperform your peers. Your financial situation will improve and debts will decrease, leaving you with increased bank account surplus and an improved quality of life. In the big picture, it's challenging, but in detail, it's easy. When you start thinking about saving 10 to 20% of income, you'll immediately come up with all sorts of excuses why this is impossible. For example, if you're drowning in debt, you'll have to think about using it to cover your debts. However, if you're still stuck in the situation described above, there's still a solution for you. Start saving 1% of your income in a special account that you'll never touch. The next money law is the law of attraction which means as you save and accumulate more, you'll attract more money into your life. The law of attraction or the law of attraction is the primary cause of prosperity throughout human history. This law explains most of the successes and failures in all fields, especially in finance. Money will go where it is loved and respected. The more positive emotions you associate with your money, the more opportunities you'll have to attract it to gain more money. Preserving Prosperity once you achieve financial success and stable prosperity, your job is not over yet. The science of money requires you to use many different asset protection methods to avoid quick losses what you've built over many years. My favorite phrase in preserving prosperity is thorough investigation, meaning carefully investigating each specific detail of an investment, double-checking with experts, consulting, discussing with accountants, bank employees, and talking to peers. Go around and meet all the people you work with and gather external opinions. If I did that even just once, yes, I would save myself not only time, but also avoid losing a large sum of money that I had accumulated over so long. You may accept more risks when young. You may truly work hard and be very ambitious. But at age 50, you start to become more cautious and meticulous. Remember, the principle is not to lose money. If you see any risk of losing money, no matter how small, Stop and ask yourself, wait a minute, can I afford to lose all this money? If the answer is no, the investment path. The relationship between money and happiness. After all, earning a huge income and building prosperity means nothing if it doesn't bring you happiness and fulfillment. We often compare ourselves to those above us. When someone reaches their first million dollars, they feel very happy, but then they start thinking about the figure of two million dollars. When looking up at those making $2 million after reaching $2 million themselves, they continue to look up at those with $5 million and so on. When they earn $5 million, they will look at those who have $10 million. People always want to strive for more. And this is truly a good thing. I call this attitude a great dissatisfaction action. It helps you push yourself to strive. Psychologists have found that your level of happiness and satisfaction is proportional to your current status, the position you think and the position you want. In this stage of life, you need to remember that money doesn't make you happy. 
It's the feeling when you accomplish what you do. Earn this money to support and take care of your family that makes you happy. It's the feeling when you unleash and leverage more and more of your potential in measure. Yes, you can really see where worth in dollars. Abraham Lincoln once said that people are only happy when they decide to be happy. Everyone has their own level of happiness like a thermostat setting a certain temperature, and they maintain that level of happiness. Your goal is to change yourself and elevate your level of happiness so that you are regularly happy. This requires you to achieve many goals, work diligently at what you do, build good, healthy relationships, and much more. Happiness is a journey, not a destination. Everyone here is either a self-made millionaire or aspires to become one in the future. It's clear that the subject of wealth building resonates with all of us. Today, I'm excited to share seven keys to becoming an outstanding leader in this industry and achieving financial success. The best part is, these keys are not complicated. To become a millionaire, you need to undergo a significant transformation. You must develop character traits that surpass those of 99% of the population, including honesty, discipline, and the ability to cultivate quality relationships. Without these foundational qualities, success becomes elusive. First and foremost, let's talk about the importance of dreaming big. Every successful individual has cited a pivotal moment in their journey when they made the decision to pursue wealth. It's about recognizing that the path to success requires dedication, hard work, and sacrifice. This leads us to the first key, which is clarity. Clarity is paramount in both success and business. Having worked with countless corporations and businesses, I found that problems often arise when there's a lack of clarity about goals and strategies. That's why I've developed the two-day MBA program, which emphasizes the importance of clarity in all aspects of business operations. It's essential to clearly define your product, identify your target customers, and understand how you can differentiate yourself from competitors. The second key is to write it down. There's immense power in putting your goals on paper. Numerous studies have shown that individuals who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them. Writing engages multiple parts of your brain, turning your goals into tangible objectives that your subconscious mind can work on 24-7. Now let's talk about the third key, which is concentration. To achieve success, you must learn to focus single-mindedly on one task at a time. Avoid distractions and stay laser-focused on your goals. Moving on to the fourth key, constraints. Every journey toward success will have obstacles or constraints. The key is to identify and address these constraints systematically, allowing you to progress more efficiently towards your goals. The fifth key is continuous learning and development. Dedicate yourself to constant improvement and stay updated on the latest trends and developments in your industry. Warren Buffett famously spends hours every day reading, emphasizing the importance of lifelong learning. Next, we have commitment. Success requires unwavering dedication and perseverance. Make a firm commitment to your goals and be prepared to put in the necessary effort and time to achieve them. Finally, courage is essential. Have the courage to begin, take risks, and face failure. But also, have the courage to persist and keep pushing forward, even when the going gets tough. In conclusion, these seven keys, clarity, writing it down, concentration, constraints, continuous learning, commitment, and courage are essential pillars on your journey to becoming a successful leader in your industry and achieving financial prosperity. By embodying these principles, you can unlock your full potential and realize your dreams of wealth and success. That's incredible timing. I just jotted down that very goal during a meeting earlier today. And now this confirmation comes along, whether through a phone call, something in the mail, or even on TV. It's simply extraordinary. So let's delve into the steps to turning those dreams into reality. Step number one, decide what you want. It sounds simple, but it's crucial. Next, write it down. There's immense power in putting pen to paper. Then, set a deadline. Give yourself a time frame to work within, setting the stage for accomplishment. Step number four is all about making a comprehensive list. Jot down every possible action you can think of to achieve your goal. And don't hesitate to add to it as new ideas come to mind. Keep a notepad by your bedside for those midnight epiphanies. You'll thank yourself later. This step is monumental. It's like a massive ship changing course in the ocean. Your entire trajectory shifts when you lay out the steps you need to take. Speaking of valuable reads, one book that truly left an impression on me is 
the Checklist Manifesto. It's a captivating exploration of how checklists can transform your approach to any endeavor, whether it's building a business or simply managing your day-to-day -day tasks. Step 5 is all about organization. Take that list you've compiled and prioritize it. What needs to be tackled first? What can wait? As you gather more information, adjust your checklist accordingly. Flexibility is key. Step 6 is where the magic happens. Taking action. Dive into the most important task on your list and get started. It doesn't have to be a monumental leap. Sometimes even the smallest step forward can set big things in motion. And finally, step 7 is about consistency. Make progress on your most important goal every single day. It's about building momentum, one small action at a time. Now here's a practical exercise for you to take home. Grab a clean sheet of paper and jot down 10 goals you'd like to accomplish in the next 12 months. Write them in the present tense, as if they've already happened. Then, pick the one goal that would have the greatest positive impact on your life if you achieved it within the next 24 hours. That's your top priority. Transfer that goal to a fresh sheet of paper and apply the seven steps we've discussed. Write it down, set a deadline, make a comprehensive list, organize it into a checklist, take action, and commit to making progress every day. Now on to the next C. Competence. You can only earn a significant income if you excel at what you do. Break down your work into essential skills and focus on honing them. Don't try to be a jack of all trades. Aim to be in the top 10% of your field in the skills that truly matter. The third C is concentration. Master the art of focusing single-mindedly on one task at a time. Clear goals, confidence in your abilities, and unwavering focus are the keys to unlocking your full potential. And let's not forget about constraints. Identify the one factor holding you back from achieving your goals, the limiting factor between where you are and where you want to. B. Address it head on and watch as barriers dissolve before you. Continuous learning and development round out the list. Dedicate yourself to ongoing improvement. Study your field religiously, like Warren Buffett devours books. It's the path to mastery. Commitment is next on the agenda. Success demands unwavering dedication. Make a solemn vow to yourself. You will succeed, no matter what it takes. And last but not least, courage. Find the courage to begin, to persist in the face of adversity, and to never, ever give up. Remember, you become what you think about, so reinforce your commitment with affirmations like, I never give up. By following these principles, deciding what you want, taking decisive action, and embodying the qualities of competence, concentration, commitment, and courage, there's no limit to what you can achieve. So go forth and conquer. One of the traits of high achievers is that, at a certain juncture in their careers, they opt for excellence. They resolve to excel in their endeavors, willing to make any sacrifice and invest any amount of time needed to master their chosen fields. This decision propels them ahead of the pack of average performers, elevating them into income brackets where they earn significantly more than their peers who haven't made a similar commitment. Early in my sales career, I learned about the 80-20 rule applied to sales. 20% of salespeople generate 80% of the revenue, leaving the remaining 80% to divide the remaining 20% amongst themselves. Hearing this, I resolved to be among the top 20% rather than the bottom 80%. This choice transformed my life. Despite grappling with a challenging upbringing and receiving subpar grades in school, I once viewed myself as an average or below average performer in any role I undertook. Then one day, I had a sudden realization. Every individual in the top 10% of their field once occupied the bottom 10%. This revelation shifted my perspective entirely. Everyone who is thriving today was once struggling. Every individual at the forefront of life's buffet line started at the back. What's more, I came to realize that whatever others have achieved within reason, I can accomplish as well. This holds true for nearly everyone. No one inherently surpasses you, and no one is inherently smarter than you. People excel in different areas, and all business skills are learnable. Those succeeding in business have learned essential skills, often alongside others, before you. If you're not achieving what others are, it simply means you haven't yet acquired these skills. This was another breakthrough realization for me. You can learn anything needed to achieve your goals. The only limits are those you place on your own mind and imagination. Deciding to excel, to join the top 10% in your field, is achievable. 
The only thing that can stop you is yourself. It won't be easy, of course. Everything worthwhile takes time and effort. But it's possible if you're dedicated enough. To achieve something new, you must become someone new. To have more, you must first be more. The fact that countless individuals have risen from the bottom to the top in every field proves that you can do it too. Hard work and dedication, rather than innate talent, lead to excellence and great success. An analysis of the Forbes 400 revealed that dropping out of high school and making it into this elite group often resulted in greater wealth than completing college. This dispels the myth that poor academic performance permanently limits success. Some of the wealthiest individuals did poorly in school. Just as you eat an elephant one bite at a time, you become excellent at what you do step by step. Your current level of knowledge and skill is becoming obsolete faster than ever before. Your earning ability can appreciate or depreciate, depending on whether you upgrade it or allow it to become obsolete. When you aggressively upgrade your knowledge and skills, it's like being in a race where you're the only one really running. Most of your competitors are strolling along doing just enough to keep their jobs. The idea of committing to excellence hasn't occurred to them as it has to you. You begin your journey to excellence by asking what additional knowledge, skills and information you need to lead your field in the future. Project yourself forward three to five years and imagine being among the best and highest paid people in your industry. Consider what would have to happen, what you'd have to learn or accomplish to reach that point. Once upon a time, I had a good friend who was a lawyer in a small firm. He eventually transitioned to a career in business, attending Harvard University's MBA program, and becoming a successful executive. It's estimated that today's average worker will have multiple jobs and careers, continually evolving as they grow and mature. You must constantly look ahead and consider the skills and competencies needed to achieve your desired level of success. Every job consists of key result areas, and grading yourself in these areas can provide valuable insights for improvement. Your weakest key skill sets the height of your income and determines your career trajectory. The highest paid individuals in every field excel across all key result areas. If you're in management, mastering planning, organizing, staffing, delegating, supervising, measuring, and reporting is crucial. Weakness in any of these areas can hinder your success. Identify your weakest key result area and focus on improving it to achieve mastery. Then. Identify the next skill to develop and work on it until you achieve mastery in that area as well. Continuous improvement is key to success in any field. I've worked with managers who were so poor at delegating that they couldn't get anything done. Eventually, they had to be fired because of the damage they were causing to the rest of the business. Give yourself a grade of 1 to 10 in each of these key result areas. Have people around you grade you as well, and be honest. Seek the truth rather than a diplomatic answer from a polite coworker. One popular management tool being used today is called a 360-degree analysis. In this type of analysis, a survey is given to several people who report to a particular manager. The survey is filled out anonymously, and all the surveys are returned to an outside consultant who summarizes the answers. This summary is then given to the manager so that he or she can see how they are perceived by others. It often comes as quite a shock to the manager. For example, they might believe they make careful and thoughtful decisions, but the staff might perceive them as weak, indecisive, and insecure when it comes to decision-making. In a recent management study, 75% of all managers rated themselves in the top 25% of effectiveness. Most managers also rated themselves in the top 20% in terms of personality and intelligence. We have a natural tendency to rate ourselves highly, regardless of the actual quality or characteristic. This is why it's helpful for a person to be rated by their peers on a regular basis. Once you have determined the key result area where you want and need to improve the most, you set it as a goal. Make a plan, determine a standard, and set a deadline. Then, you go to work to improve yourself in that area every day. In a week, a month, or a year, you will look back and be absolutely excellent in that skill area. You will have become an expert. Accept yourself the way you are. One of the most popular business books in recent years is called, First, Discover Your Strengths. This book follows from an earlier bestseller, First, Break All the Rules. The common conclusion of both of these books is that people don't change. They are born with certain natural skills and abilities. Tendencies, strengths, weaknesses and talents emerge in early life and usually crystallize in your late teens. 
They do not change very much over the course of your lifetime. One of the most important things you can do in your career is to identify what you are really good at or what you can become good at and then put your whole heart into becoming excellent in that area. Mary Baker Follett, a management consultant in the 1920s, once wrote, The very best direction to ride a horse is in the direction it is going. Similarly, the very best way to develop yourself is in the direction of your natural talents and interests. Jim Cathcart, the author and speaker, says, Nurture your nature. This is extremely important advice that you should follow throughout your career. You are put on this earth with special talents and abilities that make you unique and different from all other people who have ever lived. Throughout your life, you have often found yourself in an area of activity where your special talents and abilities have enabled you to accomplish more and enjoy what you are doing at a higher level than anything else you could do. One of your great goals in life is to identify and isolate the one or two things that you can do better and enjoy more than anything else, and then concentrate on becoming absolutely excellent in those areas. Michael Jordan, the basketball player, once said, Everybody has talent, but ability takes hard work. The poet Longfellow once wrote, The great tragedy of the average man is that he goes to his grave with his music still in him. You could struggle for years at a job for which you were ill-suited, and then find yourself in the perfect field and make more progress in a couple of years than you had made in the 20 years preceding. Napoleon Hill once wrote that the key to success in America is for you to find out what you really love to do, and then find a way to make a good living doing it. Most self-made millionaires say, I never worked a day in my life. What they did was to find out what they really enjoyed, and then they did more and more of it. There are eight ways for you to identify and determine your special talents and what you are uniquely suited to do. Here they are. You will always be the best and happiest at something that you love to do. If you could afford it, you would do it without pay. It brings out the very best in you, and you get a tremendous amount of satisfaction and enjoyment when you are engaged in that particular work. You do it well. You seem to have a natural ability to perform in this area. This talent has been responsible for most of your success and happiness in life up until now. From an early age, it is something that you have enjoyed doing, and from which you got the greatest rewards and compliments from other people. It is something that was easy for you to learn and easy to do. In fact, it was so easy to learn that you actually forgot when and how you learned it. You suddenly find yourself effortlessly and proficiently engaged in it. One day, it captivates your attention, absorbing and fascinating you. You enjoy contemplating, reading, discussing, and learning about it. It attracts you like a moth to a flame. You have an enduring inner desire to excel in this specific area throughout your life. When you're engaged in it, time seems to stand still, allowing you to work for long periods without rest. You deeply admire and respect others who excel in this area. If these descriptions resonate with anything you're currently doing or have done in the past, they may guide you toward your unique purpose in life. Your natural talents are innate and easily developed ingrained in your subconscious. Your task is to uncover this area of natural talent and nurture it throughout your life. Many skills complement each other, requiring proficiency in one to utilize others effectively. Sometimes, you must develop skills you don't particularly love to excel in your chosen field. Remember, you could be only one skill away from doubling your productivity, performance, and income. Business skills are learnable, not genetically predetermined. If a skill is crucial to you, you can learn it through dedication and practice. Avoid falling into the trap of learned helplessness by acknowledging that initial clumsiness and awkwardness are part of the journey to excellence. Use the magic wand technique to envision mastering a skill, setting new goals accordingly. Commit to lifelong self-improvement, investing time and effort to excel in critical areas. Utilize the 3 plus 1 formula for mastering any skill. Read daily listen to educational audio programs, attend seminars and workshops, and practice what you learn promptly. Resolve to join the top 10% in your field by emulating their knowledge and skills. Understand that anything achievable by others is within your reach with sufficient determination and effort. There are no limits to what you can achieve with the right goals and dedication.